New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Hello? Hello, Patsy. How soon can you meet me? Well, right away, Nick. What's the matter? We've got a job of extricating to do. Extricating? Yes, there's been a murder. And right smack in the middle of it, up to his neck, is a 16-year-old boy. Now, for the case of the boy who got lost. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. It is early evening, and in the back room of a slum district pool room, two men, Stan Powers and Crow Jackson, are in the midst of a business conference with Billy Turner, a 16-year-old boy, when... Hey, Billy... What do you want, fella? I want Billy. He's busy. Now beat it. Get your coat, Billy. Say, We're going home. Say, maybe you didn't hear what I said. Ah, take it easy, Crow. This guy's my big brother. Huh? Yeah, how'd you find out about this joint, Roy? I followed you. I promised Mom I'd find out where you've been going every night and bring you home. I don't take orders from you. Now look, kid. I don't want to get tough. Suppose you do, Roy. Where do you think that'll get you? <laughs> what was that, Mr. Powers? A threat? Oh... You know me, huh? Yeah. And I know all about you, too. Uh-huh. Close the door, Crow. Okay, Stan. What do you know about me, Roy? You've been in jail a couple of times. Is that all? Your pool room's a hangout for crooks and gangsters. And kids that's gone wrong. Listen, Roy, if you're talking about me... Shut up, me... Billy. I'll handle this. Crow. This guy goes out. Okay, Stan. Look out, Roy. Oh! Crow. Crow, you killed him. With this blackjack? <laughs> Relax, kid. He's just taking a nap. He'll be okay. You shouldn't have hit him, Crow. He thought he was doing me a favor. He was button in. I know, Stan, but Look, just... Look, Billy. I thought you wanted a crack at the big time. Well, I do. No more of them tin horn jobs on little candy stores for me. Okay. That's why I picked you to go along with us on this job tonight. Well, sure, Stan. I I know, I know. Then relax, kid. Have a smoke? Yeah. Thanks, Stan. Here, I'll give you a light. Sure. Oh. That's Roy, Stan. He's coming, oh. too. Get into the closet, Billy. What for? Get in there. I don't want him to see you. Oh, sure, sure. Oh. What do we do with this guy, Stan? Nothing. We don't knock him off? No, Crow. He's got nothing on us. Where's Billy? He went home, Buster. Home? Yeah, that's right. He didn't want to be around when you came, too. He's afraid of his big brother. You... You're kidding me. All you've got to do is go home and check. You don't see him here, do you? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Look around. And you can check the pool room on your way out. Help him up, Crow. A man's going home. Well, why didn't you come to me last night, Roy, instead of waiting until this morning? Well, I didn't think about it. I thought maybe Billy did leave the pool room and, and maybe he was stalling someplace. Afraid to come home because of the beaten crow gave me. You wouldn't have stayed out all night. Oh, well, don't I know it. Well? Listen, Mr. Carter, I'm going to tell you something. Last night, when Billy didn't show up by 12 o'clock, Mom couldn't stand it anymore. So I went out to look for him. I went back Good morning, to the... Nick. Oh, hello, Patsy. Hello, Roy. I'm glad to see you. Oh, thanks, Miss Bowen. Well, it's an excitement last night, wasn't there? What do you mean? A big holdup on 9th Street, the big supermarket. They got away with $7,000. Have the police... Go ahead, Roy. Have the police what? Have they found out about Stan Powers? What about him? He was murdered. What's that? That's what I started to tell you, Mr. Carter. When I went back to the pool room to look for Billy, I went into the back room. Stan... Uh, Mr. Powers was on the floor. With a knife in his back. 
With an... Well, didn't you report that to the police? Well, I was afraid, Mr. Carter. All I could see in my mind was, was Billy mixed up in a killing. The police come into our house to ask a lot of questions. Mom. Roy, do you think Billy did it? No, I know he didn't. At least I don't think... All right, all right, then. Come on, Patsy. We're going down to Stan Power's pool room. I'm going with you, Mr. Carter. No, no, you stay right here, Roy. I'll bring you back a full report as soon as I find out what's what. Yeah, the porter found Powers, Nick. He came in to clean up about an hour ago, and uh, boom. What time was he killed, Matty? Coroner said between 11 and 1 o'clock last night. Uh-huh. Any idea what the motive might have been? Yeah, Patsy, we think it was a double cross. Oh? We found these slips of paper on the floor. Oh, cash register receipt from the 9th Street supermarket. Right. The job was pulled by Stan Powers and his gang. These oh. receipts prove it. Oh, but why should Stan Powers have been murdered? That open safe should tell you why, Patsy. Huh? Oh, I, I didn't notice it, Nick. Those crooks got away with 7000 bucks last night, but there ain't a nickel in that safe or on Stan Powers. Now, Nick, somebody... Uh, somebody, uh, one of Stan's gang probably, wanted that money and killed Stan to get it. Right. Mind if I look at the body? Do what you like, Nick, but make it snappy. The boys from the morgue will be here any minute to take it away. Hey, Matty, come here. Yeah, what's the matter? Take a good look at the handle of this knife. The one that did the killing. I already did. It's a horn-handled knife, and there's white powder in some of the hollows. Well, what do you suppose it is? Looks to me like it's face powder, Patsy. Well, and you think that a woman... Sure I do. No, not so fast, Matty. Huh? Men use powder after shaving. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But look, Nick, I still think this is the kind of powder a woman uses. That it was on her hand when she used that knife. And, uh, look here... Take a look at this cigarette lighter. What about it? We found it on the floor near Stan's body. Hmm. Billy. What? What'd you say, Nick? Said Billy. The name engraved on this lighter. Oh, good heavens. Now, look, Nick, I ask you, would a mug be seen with a dainty little lighter like this? Well, that's a good point, Maddie. So, I figure Billy could be a woman's name. Do you? It could be, Nick. Yes, it could be. Come on, Betsy. Right with you. Hey, hey, what's the rush? It's only 299 days to Christmas, Matty. We've got some shopping to do. Well, I'll be a... Nick, do you think that cigarette lighter belongs to Billy Turner? I'll let you know after I phone to Roy at the office. Okay. Oh, th there's a phone booth over there. No, no, Patsy. I want to use a phone that's not too close to the scene of this murder. Office. Roy, this is Nick. Mr. Carter, what'd you find? Roy, tell me, did Billy own a cigarette lighter? Yeah. Describe it. Well, it looked like it was made of silver, and it was it was small and pretty fancy. He left it on the table once in the house. I I asked him where he got it. Was he... his name engraved on it? Yeah, why, Mr. Carter? The police found it in Stan's office near Stan's body. What? Didn't you see it there last night? No, do you think I'd have left it there if I did? I saw the guy on the floor dead, so I beat it. Look, Mr. Co Are the cops saying Billy killed Stan Powers? No, no, not yet. They're looking for someone else. Now, tell me, did Billy own a horn-handled jackknife? No. Are you sure? Well, I'd have seen it if he had one, Mr. Carter. All right. Now, what can you tell me about Crow? Well, not much. Uh, he was about my height, 5 feet 11. He had black hair and a dirty complexion. You know his real name? Stan or Billy mentioned it? No. No, they just called him Crow. Okay, I'll talk to you later. In the meantime, stay in my office. Goodbye. Oh. Well, Nick? That ladder belongs to Billy, all right. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, the police will trace it as sure as we're standing here, and that'll lead them directly to Billy. Nick, are we going to look for Billy, too? No, no, right now I'm more interested in the powder on the handle of that knife than the guy named Crow. <laughs> Nick sets out to find a man called Crow and learn the meaning of some white powder on a knife handle. Meanwhile, Matty and the police are tracing a cigarette lighter that will surely lead them to Billy Turner. We'll see what happens next in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the boy who got lost. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. 
Nick Carter and Patsy Bowen, faced with the possibility that Billy Turner, a 16-year-old boy, may be implicated in the knife murder of Stan Powers, a gang leader, are trying desperately to run down the identity of Crow, the dead man's lieutenant, and to solve the riddle of the white powder on the handle of the murder knife. In the meantime, in Crow's apartment near the center of town, Billy is having trouble. Just let me call my mom, Crow. I won't tell her where I am. Listen, kid, I'm doing this for your own good. So get down through your thick head and shut up. But I ain't been home since last night. Mom will be worried sick. You're a pain in the neck. Maybe I ought to let you go altogether. Let the cops pick you up. But I didn't kill Stan. Stop kidding, will you? I forgot my lighter and I went back for it. When I got there, Stan was lying on the floor. Dead. Sure, sure. I didn't kill him, I tell you. I caught you bending over him, didn't I? I told you, Crow. I was looking to see if he was dead. Look, Billy, I'm your pal. You don't have to lie to me. Why should I kill Stan? There's a lot of dough in Stan's office last night. Maybe you was planning on getting it for yourself. You're nuts. I never went near that safe. That's because I walked in on you. I didn't have to swipe the dough. We were going to split that 7000 bucks in a couple of days. There was more than seven grand in that safe. There was another 3500 You wanted that too, didn't you? Say, hey, how do you know how much Stan had in his safe? Huh? Yeah, how come you know all about that? What are you getting at, kid? You killed Stan. You did it. Now, wait a minute. I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you're not. Let go of me, Crow. Save your breath, cowboy. I got a reason for keeping you here, and it ain't because I like you. Why don't you let me go? If the cops pick you up, you get stretched for murder. And you talk. You're only a kid. You tell the cops about me and the other guys being in on the job at the supermarket, that makes me a four-time loser, and I go up for life. No, nobody can make me talk. Nobody's going to get the chance. I protect you, and that way I'm protecting myself. I don't need protection from nobody except you. Why, you little punk? Ow! What's the idea? You've got to learn to appreciate your pals, kid. Slapping me around ain't going to change nothing. Look, I ought to... I'll answer that, kid. Okay, answer it. Yeah? Talking. What? You know anything else? Uh-huh. Okay, tell the guys not to worry. They'll never get him. Yeah. Yeah, you can take my word for it. That was bad news, Billy. What do you mean? Your name's in all the newspapers. What are you giving me, Crow? The cops have got your cigarette lighter. They got my lighter? Yeah, they found it near Stan's body. They're looking for the owner. Gee, they'll say I killed Stan. You can't let them pick you up, Billy. You gotta find another hideout. Well, what am I gonna do? Don't worry, kid. They'll never find you. Never. Uh, Nick, you must have questioned a hundred people trying to find out about that guy, Crow. Yeah, at least a hundred. And nobody admitted he even heard of him. Well, maybe Maddie will be able to tell us. Well, if he can, perhaps somebody else here at police headquarters can. Seems to be our only chance. True. Oh, um, never mind. Here they are now. I've uh, just been trying to get you, Nick. It's on your mind, Maddie. We traced that cigarette letter. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah. A lot easier than we thought. Bought in a store on the west side. Oh. Well, at least I'm glad it was bought. You're not going to like this, Nick, but... We've got a warrant out for the arrest of Billy Turner. Oh, huh? but, Sergeant, he's only 16. 16 or 60. Murder is murder, Patsy. Oh. Sorry about it, Nick. I found out he's the brother of Roy Turner, one of the kids in your boys' club. Oh, then you've been to his home. Yeah, I talked to their mother. Oh, that poor woman. Well, I guess she had to know sooner or later. Oh, I suppose so, but... Why would Billy want to kill Sam? All I know is that the safe was open and that the 7000 that gang took from the supermarket is gone. Maddie, that doesn't prove If you ask me, Nick, we'll find that the guy who killed Stan and took the dough is Billy Turner. Well, maybe. Oh, by the way, Maddie, I found out what that white powder was. Yeah? A little chemical analysis reveals that it's common, ordinary flour. The kind you make bread with. Oh, you're nuts, Nick. Why should there be flour on the handle of that knife? Well, it's a question I can't answer yet, but that's what it is. Now, look, don't tell me Billy Turner is a baker as well as a crook. Billy's no crook, Sergeant. Even I can see that. Well, I can't. Hey, Matty, what do you know about a man named Crow? Crow? 
Crow who? If I knew that, I'd be on my way to meet him. Now, look, what's he got to do with this case? He was a member of Stan's gang, and Roy Turner saw him in Stan's office last night. Nick, have you been holding out on me? What was Roy doing there? Trying to get Billy to go home with him. Crow knocked him out with a blackjack. He blacked out Roy? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me this before, Nick? Well, does it matter much? Well, I'll say it does. Crow. That name must Crow. mean something to you, Matty. Why don't you ask me to remember a guy named Joe? Might be a lot easier. All right, all right. Crow. I thought we'd be saving time by asking you, but now I guess I'll have to get Roy down here for a look at the rogues gallery. If he saw the guy face to face, he ought to be able to pick him out. Oh, but that'll take Crow. hours. Crow. I know it, I know it. It may save Billy Turner a lot of years Crow. if he happens to be innocent. Crow. That's him, Mr. Carter. This is a picture of Crow. Uh-huh. Oh, and I was just beginning to give up hope. Roy, you're sure this is Crow? Yeah, yeah, I'd know him any place. Well, Maddie, This character is Philip Jackson, alias Jack Phillips, alias Crow Jackson. And he's the guy who killed Stan Powers. Hey, wait a minute, Roy. How do you know that? Well, because he tried to kill me. Isn't that enough? No. You went to Stan's place to get Billy, didn't you? You told him, Mr. Carter. I had to, Roy. All right, all right. I went there, but Billy wouldn't come home with me. Uh-huh. I had an argument with Stan, and then And we... then you went out like a light. Well, Crow came at me from behind. I never had a chance. Hey. Maybe you got a motive for killing Stan, Roy. Me? Now, look here, Matty. Why not, Nick? He found out that Stan was making a crook out of his kid brother. He couldn't get Billy to quit the gang. So he killed Stan and framed Billy? Is that your logic, Matty? No. You just didn't notice his... Kid Brothers lighter. No, you're nuts. Now, take it easy. Take it easy, Roy. Listen, Matty, I want you and this picture of Crow to take a trip with me. Yeah, where to? Down to the supermarket. I'd like the manager to see this picture. Then you may have a reason to go after Crow for armed robbery, at least. Okay, okay, but this boy stays here. Is he under arrest, Sergeant? Not yet, Patsy, but I want to know where he is. If I happen to need him. All right, mister, is uh, the man in this picture one of the guys that held up this market last uh, night? Well, I, I think so, officer. Well, can't you be sure? Oh, I'd be plenty sure, miss. If the color of his hair was different. The color of his hair? You mean mm-hmm. it wasn't black? Huh? Oh, no, sir, no, sir. It was white. That's it, Matty. That's why there was flour on the knife handle. Come again? Uh, he didn't have a knife. He had a gun. No, we're talking about another crime, Mr. Jones. And thanks very much. You've been a great help. Oh, Goodbye. I, I don't understand it. He get held up. Well, all we've got to do now is to get Crow Jackson. Or oh, whatever other name he might be using this week. And, uh, Nick, what's this about you know why there was flour on the handle of that knife? Matty, flour is much better than face powder for making black hair look white. It sticks better. Why, sure. Crow used it as a disguise. Well, it... Right. And it's going to land him in the hot seat. If we ever find him. Well, Matty, you want to know where to look for him? Now, look, Nick, I don't carry every crook's address mm-hmm. around in my notebook. Maybe not, but the probation department does. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you're right. I, I was just going to phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the spirit, Matty. You arrest Crow for robbery and I'll see that he's convicted for murder. Hmm. Seems as though Crow's playing hard to get, Nick. Uh, well, it's only a door and we've got a warrant. Come on, Matty, we need muscles. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Hey, nobody's uh... here. We should have known that a guy with a murder rap staring him in the face would lamb out of here. Well, just the same. I want to take Look, a Nick, I'll get out of general now, Wait alarm. a minute, wait a minute. I want to look around. But what, what for? Well, you never can tell what you'll find. Okay, okay, but if you think now, that wait this wait a minute, guy... wait, look. Two people were in this room, and they left huh? only a few minutes before we got here. Brother, I've seen you pull some rabbits out of a hat, but now you're trying... Look, I'm calling headquarters. Matty, Rick. look at that cigarette in the ashtray. Huh? huh? Why, it's still smoldering. Okay, okay, Nick. How do you figure there were two people here? Because there are two different brands of cigarettes in the ashtray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Turner smoked one of them. Oh, but huh? Nick, you don't know what brand Billy smokes. Don't have to know that. What do you mean? Look here, at the underside of this half-smoked cigarette. What? Huh? Why, somebody wrote Billy on it in pencil. Then it was Billy who was here with Crow. Yeah, it looks that way. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm? I wonder what this is here on the table. Crow probably left his forwarding address. No, he didn't, but somebody left this drawing here. It's sure yeah. a funny kind of drawing, if you ask me. It's doodling, if you ask me. Yeah? Yeah. 
Well, look at this odd-shaped figure here, Maddie, and this yeah. thing inside it. Could it be somebody's idea of a tree? And uh, look at this other figure, Nick. A circle with a swirl inside. Yeah. Maybe that odd-shaped figure could be a tree on an island. Of course. And the circle... Maddie, this is a message. Nuts! This drawing, the one you call doodling, will never win an art cast, no, but it tells me exactly where Crow and Billy went. I'm tired, Crow. I gotta rest for a minute. Keep rowing, kid. You'll have plenty of time to rest later. You think the cops got to your apartment by now? If your wise guy brother told him about me, they have. I should have knocked him off. He was only trying to help me, Crow. Give him over the left door, kid. Huh? The left door. Pretty dark, but we're heading for the island the way we're going. And that lady... We're making a detour, Billy. If I do like you say, we'll head right into the whirlpool. You catch on, kid. And that's where you get off. Oh, you ain't planning to run That's running... right, kid. <laughs> the cops will find you floating around in a couple of days, and they'll close the books. Huh? They'll say you couldn't face a murder rap. I knew you was dirty, Crow, but Go I... Go ahead, a... kid, and roll. I'll tell you when to jump. You'll tell me nothing, wise guy. If I drown, you drown with me. <laughs> I got the oars, see? And I got this blackjack here, Billy. Why, you lousy... It's a dark night, and we're out here in the middle of the channel. Nobody can see us. So it looks like you go overboard when I say so. Get it? Billy Turner heads toward death in the channel, and no one to whom he can call for help is within hearing distance. We'll see what happens next in just a minute. Now for the conclusion of the case of the boy who got lost. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. It is a few minutes later, and Nick, Patsy, and Matty are in a boat or police launch, heading toward the island, their eyes fixed on the water which is lighted by the boat's searchlight. Keep that searchlight moving, Matty. Yeah. They must be here somewhere. There's the island up ahead, Nick. But I don't see them. They must have used a motorboat. It would have to be a fast one, Patsy. They couldn't have been more than a few minutes ahead of us. Hey, are you sure this is the right place, Nick? Do you know of any other whirlpool around here? Well, no, but there could be one, maybe. You know of any other island shaped like the drawing Billy left? Well, no, no, I don't, Nick. But that doesn't mean there ain't one. Oh, well, when you put uh, the island and the whirlpool together, you have to admit, sir. Okay, that's, 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 okay, that's... okay. You okay. win, you win. This must be the place. Come on, come on, Maddie. Can't you get a little more life into this tub? Look, she's riding at top speed now, Nick. After all, she ain't a... Help! Help! Ah! Hey, swing What's your that? around. We'll find out. Yeah, sure. Help! Help! Nick, that must uh, be them. There, in that rowboat. Yeah, there are two men in it. And they're fighting. Speed it up, Maddie. That rowboat's moving toward the whirlpool. I'll try, Nick. Nick, they've stopped fighting. And one of them's got a gun. And he's aiming. Oh, so he wants to play, huh? Well, that's what it looks like. Hey, Nick, take the wheel. This is a game two can play at. I got it, Matty. He sure is a lousy shot. Yeah, because the searchlight's in his eye. Well, I'll give this cookie a lesson in how to shoot. You hit him, he's down. Good shooting, Matty. I only hope he's alive when we get our hands on him. The idea of Crow taking Billy out to drown him in the whirlpool. What some people won't do for an alibi. Yeah, Patsy, but it was all wasted motion. After Crow gets out of the hospital, he's going to stand trial for murder. And after that... He'll never need money again. That $10,000 the police found stuffed in his pocket should be enough to convict him. Yep, that and the flower particles we found on the inside of his coat and on his shirt collar. Right. Oh, um, what do you think will happen to Billy? Well, he admitted taking part in the supermarket holdup and a few others. Afraid Billy is going away for a while. It's a shame, too. A 16-year-old kid. Well, Patsy, I've got an idea that Billy won't be gone too long. And when he comes back... He's going to feel the way his brother Roy does about what's right and what's wrong. I hope so. You wait and see. We'll have him in the boys' club yet. (laughs) 
Nick, what about next week's adventure? Oh, just a minute, Mike. I want to ask you a question. When are we going to announce the winners of the new 1948 Ford Sedans in the first new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser Jingle Contest? Nick, I'll have the names of those winners next week. Well, fine. I hope everybody will be listening. Oh, so do I. Now, suppose you tell us something about next week's show. Well, next week, Mike, Patsy and I get mixed up with a gang of racketeers, a kidnapping, and a particularly brutal murder. And Nick might not have solved it if the killer hadn't forgotten to leave a clue. You mean you caught him because there wasn't any evidence, Nick? That's it, Mike. (laughs) That sounds like a new twist. What do you call the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Absent Clue. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Stedman Coles. Original music is played by Henry Silburn. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Michael Fitzmaurice speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.